Okay, we're, we're working on doors and hinges and shelf supports, but I got to show you something first. This is one of our PySafe shelves. And looking at it, I thought it might, so we left it set in the back. And here in Virginia, we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of rain. So in the back, we've had a lot of um, humidity. And I did not bag these, I just left them. Again, this is Woodworking 101. And if you recall, when we glued this shelf up, we had it glued up where we had a nice flat plane. Take a look at it. We ain't got nothing close. This is how much that moisture's moved this wood. It's cupped, it's nasty. There's really no way at this point that we could really salvage this in a normal means of uh, processing. But because we're, we, we kept it wide enough, we can recover. Now again, we're at the point now, we're getting ready to process tops and all because we're going to be coming to them on the pie safe. So again, I say I'm not going to process until I'm ready to go. What happened? Just moisture. Simple moisture. You know, this piece could have been laying back there, upside down, opposite of what it is now. And this side absorbing moisture, this side being getting some air and drying out, whatever. But the point is, we can't do much with this. But there is an alternative. Remember in the beginning, when we were working with that big piece of eight quarter to get the post, and we had all that cup, it's the same thing. Except here, we've got a little thinner stock. The only recourse to this is to recut it and re-glue it. Now right here is our worst part of the cup. And remember when we did that, how it wanted to come down on the blade and pinch? Well, let me show you something. What I'm going to do is I'm setting the blade, which you're not going to be able to see on this saw, at about two-thirds the way through the piece. And I'm going to rip it. did is I broke its back a little bit. I can now push down and pull some of it out. Still pretty firm so I may need it to have taken a little more. So let me do that. Just a little more. I want this to I want it to be able to lay down with a little bit of pressure is what I'm after. There it goes. Now I'm setting relatively flat. Now I have a video out here called Uncup the Cup. And what we did in that video was we did this and assumed that we had a big nice wide panel that we didn't want to disturb the face on. What we could do now if we wanted to is actually just glue a shim in here, this clamp flat, and we've taken care of the cup. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and cut it in half. And you notice I'm able to cut it. I have no drop or nothing. Again, I've taken that, that pressure out. Now what I need to do is I, because this was on an angle, when we cut it, you understand what I'm saying? Because of that cup, and now it's flat, it's on an angle. So I need to skim this side again. Now I need to look at 
this. See right here? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna cut this, this section loose. I'm just gonna completely do a complete re-glue. Now I don't have enough here that's gonna affect me because I'm pretty flat down here. What that means is when I, once I get past the saw, I'm not gonna have a pinch point here. It's in that end. Now, the reason we re the reason we recut all the edges was to make sure they're on 90 degrees. But I'm actually going to flip this, and I can put it back together. And when I do, I will come back to having that flat panel. And again, this just reinforces why you don't try to go to full size until you're ready. Because had I done that, I would have had to glue it in or add it in a piece and I would have had me a mess. It's also a good reason why you work your wood as thick as you can and as wide as you can. Now, I've got another little issue. And again, same thing. If you look at this big one, you can see what I got. It's again in the glue joint. But this big wide piece of poplar in here, okay, it's trying to cup a little bit to the center. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to knock this seam loose. I'm going to split that and put it back together. I'm going to process them flat and I'm going to put them in plastic bags what I should have done and I told you to do it but I wanted you to see the result of not doing it so <clears throat> but that, this is a shelf and this is a top now I want to show you something this is a oak one and oak is far worse than poplar about moving but we put this one in the plastic it's got a little teeny bit but not much nothing that won't process out but it did just fine. Again, keeping that equilibrium in wood. Okay, let me rip these, we'll get them in glue, and we'll be right back. Okay, our shelves are glued up, and our tops. Now, the other shelves and everything, we put them in plastic bags, they're dead flat, no, no issue, no problem. But I really wanted to hammer home the importance of that. Acclimation and how wood can change due to seasonal changes. I wasn't quite planning on it being that much, but you got the point. Okay, in the last webisode, what we did was we predominantly spent our time working on mortising the hinges. And you're gonna notice I had the pie safe laying on its side. We did that so you could see. The best way to do it, now in this case, we've already mortised for the hinges. But we want the pie safe vertical for fitting the doors on a nice level surface or as level as we can get. I told you, these pie safes can rack. Rack means moving this way or that way a little bit. Without question, a solid plywood back in this would help immensely. 
And this would be, if you're going to use plywood, this would be the point you would at least want the back fitted and in there so that everything's as rigid as possible. So bear that in mind. But what we're going to do is we need to fit these doors. And again, we left them oversized, over width, and just about perfect in the length. So we got to create a gap, but that, that leaves us room to maneuver. First thing you do is check your door to make sure this side <coughs> is straight to the post. You want your outside straight. Then you want to look right here and make sure that this line is right. As long as it's setting square, you're okay. Now, what if you're not? Or in my case, I now need to create a gap. So what, what am I going to do? Well, in my case, because I've got my joiner right here, very gently, and I'm going to emphasize gently, I'm going to joint this. The reason being, I got to go easy because when I exit on this edge, that joiner can chip it. So here's a little trick. Bump it. Then join it. Ah, see what I got? Yep. See it? See the top corner? And if you look, see I'm tight right here. I've got a little bit of a gap here. So how am I going to handle that? Easiest way is, is with a plant hand plane. Again, just a nice little low angle hand plane. got to go from I'm really tight on the end a little bit tight a little bit right here now I'm set really light on this plane because I want to sneak up on it. I want to ease into it. I don't want to get drastic. All right, she's coming in. A little bit more. Now, the other thing I could do is because I'm tight, because I'm loose here, tight here, I can also shave a little bit off of this side.
little bit more. I need to go from tight to here, a little bit to there. Now you notice I didn't take very much. Just barely peeling it. I've just got a little bit right here. One more time. That's probably about it. good shape so now we know we have this this line is good there's an alternative let's assume for a moment you don't have a decent hand plane another way of doing this is to router cut it or pattern cut it let me show you if I take a piece this is just a scrap piece of MDF and no matter what I do, and you can see it ain't, it's anything but square. So I could actually take, that one's a little better. I could actually take a hand plane, maybe not a good one, or a rasp or anything and get me a straight line here. Got that? You've got, once you get that straight line, then what could you do? Then a simple thing to do is set it up, use it as a pattern. The MDF, MDF fitting perfectly, lay it on the door, flush to your edge, then take a flush trim router bit, again pattern cutting and take that and use that to trim the bottom of the door to get your fit. This is a good alternative if you're worried about getting your door too short. This allows you to do all your hand work then translate it to the door. If you mess up on the MDF, no foul, no problem. That works well. Okay, we now have the left and the right fitting well in two planes, here and here. Now, I told you again, this is, I made these two and five eighths, each one. So what I'm going to do is I need to trim this side down to my two and a half, which actually translates two and seven sixteenths in order to give us a gap. But because this side is straight, I don't know that this side is. I don't know that this side is perfectly parallel to that side. We were clamping and doing everything. So what I'm going to do here is I want to skim this edge, barely skim it through the table saw to make sure that I am straight on both sides. Parallel, rather. I think it's parallel, right? I want this side, I want this door the same, I want this as straight as that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit this edge real quick on the table saw just to skim about a 30 second.
All right, <clears throat> now, on this right door, because we had to hand plane that side and everything, I actually had to take about a sixteenth off in order to make sure that everything's running true. So now I have one, two, three true surfaces. And I've still got plenty of length in my door to make my top when we get to that point. So now what I wanna do Again, I'm going to make this a right hand open, meaning I'm going to make this door open to the right, be the first one. So what I want to do now is I'm going to trim, I'm going to trim it down to where each one of these sides is at my two, actually I need to be about two and seven sixteenths over here, about two and a half here. Now understand that. The reason for the two and seven sixteenths on this side is to give us room for the, for the hinge. So I'm gonna mark this at two and a half, get a width measurement, in this case 18 and an eighth, and I'm gonna cut this door, the right door only, to 18 and an eighth. Now somebody's going to pose the question, well, but we're moving these around, so that means this line and this line is not going to be perfectly the same. You're moving 30 seconds, you know, you're moving so minor that it, it's not a big deal. And if it is, again, we've still got some length, so we may have to take a little bit off of one on the bottom, a little bit off on the other at the top, but we still have the length. And we'll look at that. Okay, this door, the left door, because it's gonna be overlapped, we're gonna leave it at the two and five eighths. But we need to take this one down to the two and seven sixteenths. Now what I need to do is I need to start doing my notch so that one overlaps the other. Now that my doors are at seven eighths, so I'm going to mark was that seven sixteenths? Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the table saw. I'm just going to do it with the table saw blade. Here's my mark right there. I'm going to lower this blade until, and I want to rotate because I want to make sure that my tooth, this tooth right here, <clears throat> the highest tooth is coming in right at it. Now you don't need this to be 100% tight, meaning you want them to overlap but they don't have to fit perfectly as far as depth goes. You want them close, because remember, you're gonna be doing a little finishing there. So since this is the left door, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure So what I wanna do is I wanna measure my two and a half right here 
get a wick. Then I'm gonna run it face down. Now I'm going to go to the right door and I want to notch it a little bit face up. You always want this notch to be a little bigger than the other one because when the doors close you don't want them to be able to pinch on each other. Now I need to double check. You know, I'm just a little bit not deep enough. Well, let me see. Yeah, I'm about 30 seconds off. So I could either adjust the saw blade, which I should have checked this before I did anything. Yeah, I hope you got that. But I also just take a little rabbiting plane and clean it up. But before I do anything, I want to check my fit, width and everything. All right, still a little wide there. Bye. Oh, about. 30 seconds or so. So what I'm going to do now, again, sneaking up on it. Double check myself. All right, I'm a little wide right here. Just a little. So I'm going to trim that. All right, now I can do it purely by measurement. Meaning, my opening here is 36 inches. And I want a 16th gap, a 16th in the center, and a 16th on the outside. So that equates to 3 16ths. So I can just simply measure and adjust. All right, right there it is. I need to cut that side. 
Y'all let me forget that, didn't you? All right, we can handle that. All right, let me see what I got now. Now, you know, the main thing I want you to get out of this is you keep seeing me easy and easy and easy and that sneak up on it thing. Take your time. Hmm. Let's see what we got. I might get a sixteenth here, sixteenth here, so we now have a line. We now have a good true line. The only issue we've got is a little bit, so see we're sitting tight on the bottom. The only issue we're going to have is on the top. Now I can lay the pie safe down and and because and, I know this is right then I can access the top and whether using the MDF or whatever I need to do I can trim my top because I want my doors about an eighth inch shorter than the opening. Again it's going to give us a sixteenth gap on the bottom and a sixteenth on the top. Okay so let me get the pie safe laying down and we'll fit it. Okay with the doors laying in the pie safe everything's square First thing I did was I double checked my line, and I'm pretty good. But in the event that I wasn't, I would adjust, I would have taken a little bit off the bottom or whatever to get it exactly like we want it. Now I'm going to come to the top, again, <clears throat> making sure this line, the side and the bottom, is right where I want it. Now, you would initially think that you could just take a square and go across here, and you very well may. But assuming that we don't know for sure that this beam on top is perfectly straight or hasn't moved, what I do is I simply take an eighth of an inch shim and, and indexing off the very top right here. And you see this corner? I'm, I'm almost right there. But I can come across and line it up with the top edge of the pie safe, make a mark, take a straight edge, connect the dots, and either using the router or a hand plane, hand plane it to the line. And I have my gaps now set. So now I have a sixteenth, sixteenth, all the way around, or pretty close thereabouts. That's how I size them up. So, not difficult. Okay, we're going to get the hinges mounted on this which are identical to how, again, we mortised them. There's only one caution I want to show you. Let me grab a hinge. Okay, when you, now these are the lift-off hinges, and we showed them to you. Wanna, but make sure you understand, when you buy these, you have to get a left and a right. Okay, because if you don't, what happens is you wind up the way it goes on, you're going to wind up with the door wanting to fall off. And that's not a good thing. So make sure you pay attention if you use the lift off hinges and get them on correctly. In our next, in our next look at this, we're going to look at the rat tail on the oak pie safe. And we'll have the doors already set up. One thing we need to do is install the hinges. But there's some things you want to pay attention to if you're using rat tails and thing you want to some cautions you want to take. So in our next time, we'll take a look at the rat tails and our shelf supports.